Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's program. Today's program is entitled Ethics and Law, and specifically today we're going to be talking about sexual misconduct. Sexual misconduct. Well, all of us can imagine that uh, sexual misconduct could include overt sex in the office with a patient but that of course is the most egregious uh, type of example in fact uh, sexual misconduct uh, evolves along a continuum that includes uh, very subtle uh, and inconspicuous types of behaviors of course all the way to those behaviors that involve actual sexual contact uh, with our patients, clients, and patrons. So let's talk about uh, some of these inappropriate remarks, inappropriate gestures, uh, inappropriate eye contact uh, to more uh, serious transgressions including inappropriate touch all the way to the most serious transgressions which would be actual sexual relations uh, in the office. Now inappropriate remarks happen all the time and I want you to pay particular attention from here on out to how you uh, joke around with your patients. Uh, you may consider that you're just being yourself, you're just being casual, uh, as I said earlier, many times we interact with our patients uh, hundreds of times over the course of uh, multiple decades as uh, chiropractors, taking care of family members and kids of family members and multiple generations. It's, it's not uncommon to have hundreds of visits. And you may feel that you know your patients very well and that you can let your guard down and just be casual, but you can't you have to at all times maintain uh, absolute professional propriety because you can never tell when something that you say in a casual way could be taken poorly uh, by your patient. So some of these uh, inappropriate remarks include flirtations, uh, include uh, off-color jokes, could include sexual innuendos, and uh, what are sexual innuendos? Well, innuendos uh, are statements which indirectly suggest that someone has done something improper or immoral. And you know when you're making a sexually oriented innuendo. An innuendo is sort of an uh, oblique allusion to something that's improper or immoral. And you might think that you're being clever uh, with these types of remarks, but I'm suggesting to you uh, that you nip them in the bud and and do not let them out because they can be mistaken uh, as inappropriate sexually oriented remarks uh, by your patient. Uh, patronizing language uh, can be uh, inappropriate sexually and patronizing language is language that serves to suppress or demean uh, a person sexually. So use of the terms such as honey, or gorgeous, or beautiful, or hey girlfriend. Uh, in the case of male patients, uses of the words studly, and cowboy, and macho man. These are words that have subtle sexual connotations uh, that could be seen as demeaning and patronizing and that should be removed uh, from your language. Uh, other inappropriate remarks could include sexually oriented compliments. For example, a uh, female patient comes to the appointment uh, showing quite a bit of cleavage and you glance at the cleavage and you make an, uh, a compliment, an offhanded compliment such as nice shirt or nice pants or nice shorts or nice top, etc. Uh, knowing full well that you're referring sexually uh, to something other than the shirt. Uh, other compliments that uh, need to be taken very carefully is, uh, oh my goodness, uh, you know, you've lost weight, or oh my goodness, it looks like you're working out, 
or wow it looks like those lunges are really paying off and anything that has uh, a sexual uh, innuendo behind it uh, could constitute uh, an inappropriate remark. Well, what else? Well, suggesting the possibility of a dating or sexual or romantic relationship uh, with the patient after the professional relationship ends, that uh, could constitute inappropriate remarks. Uh, soliciting a date with a patient, a client, or a key party. And I uh, draw your attention here to the phrase key party. The Board of Chiropractic Examiner's regulations referred to patients, patrons, clients, and customers. Uh, here, we add the term key party uh, to the list of uh, the population that uh, we as doctors are restricted from soliciting dates with. So a patient, a client, or a key party. So let me ask you. What could qualify as a key party? That could include a vendor. That could include your landlord. That could include the family member of a patient, etc. So I draw your attention here to uh, the phrase key party. Uh, finally, uh, inappropriate remarks could include uh, discussing the sexual history, preferences, or fantasies of either the patient or the healthcare provider. And certainly the healthcare provider uh, should in no way uh, spend even one moment discussing any of these as relates to himself. Okay, well, what about inappropriate touch? Well, inappropriate touch could include uh, adjusting the patient's clothing for them. Uh, and that could include uh, the patient being uh, supine, the patient being prone, uh, even a standing patient. When you need to have the patient's uh, clothing adjusted, uh, ask them to do that for you. Uh, some patients could construe that uh, as a violation of their personal space unrelated to the treatment encounter. Uh, hugging, touching, fondling, and caressing uh, of a romantic nature is prohibited and is construed as inappropriate touch. Uh, we talked about hugging which should be removed from the chiropractic uh, greeting and the chiropractic departure. Uh, caressing of a romantic nature uh, generally involves touch with the tips of the fingertips with the flat parts of the finger prints where the greatest amount of sensory receptors uh, are located. Uh, inappropriate touch uh, also uh, consists of gaze violations where uh, simply with your eyes your patient can feel as if you touch their entire body and grope their entire body up and down as you undress them uh, with your eyes. Now typically accepted gaze durations uh, are about one second unless you're looking directly into the patient's eyes at which ki in which case uh, gazes can be extended. Now particularly sensitive areas to extended gaze uh, includes the suprasternal notch in women and the erogenous zones including the nipples in both sexes. So any gazes beyond one second at any of those areas uh, could be considered uh, inappropriate touch in the form of a gaze violation. Finally, uh, rubbing against a patient or client or key party uh, for sexual gratification uh, is considered inappropriate touch. And this is particularly important for chiropractors to take note of as many of our manipulative procedures involved uh, large body contact and extended body contact. And you want to make sure that when you perform your manipulations that your patient does not in any way get the thought that you may be extending the contact for your own sexual gratification. So basically, uh, inappropriate touch, in order just to uh, summarize this topic, 
Uh, inappropriate touch includes any behavior, any gesture, or any expression uh, that can in any way uh, be interpreted as seductive or sexual. And who is it that does the interpreting? Well, it's the patient. So you want to make sure that the patient has no chance, there's no possibility, there's no way that they can interpret uh, your behavior as seductive or sexual. We want to uh, maintain a paragon of probity and not, uh, and not transgress that doctor-patient relationship. Uh, also, physical contact, which can be in any way interpre interpreted as demeaning, humiliating, embarrassing, threatening, uh, or harming in any way uh, to a patient, client, or key party. And then finally, uh, the most egregious of the sexual misconduct uh, includes actual uh, sexual contact, such as removing more clothes than is absolutely necessary for the examination or the treatment procedure, uh, includes touching the breast, genitals, anal, anus, or any uh, sexualized body part except as consistent with accepted community standards of practice for examination, diagnosis, and treatment and within the healthcare practitioner's scope of practice. So within a chiropractor's scope of practice there are very few instances okay doctors there are very few instances uh, in which touching these body parts uh, could be considered in any way acceptable. So I caution chiropractors uh, about touching any of these particular body parts, uh, even in examination based upon the chiropractic scope of practice. Uh, certainly kissing could be construed as sexual contact, uh, examination of or touching the genitals without the use of gloves, and uh, I can think of a circumstance where uh, this uh, could come up in the chiropractic scope of practice. Uh, and I'm thinking of a situation uh, in my own practice where I was doing some independent medical examination on an injury victim who claimed uh, to have suffered an inguinal hernia. And uh, examination of an inguinal hernia uh, while not within my scope of a chiropractic practice, uh, did require that I uh, briefly examine for this, and so uh, this requires the use of examination gloves. Finally, sexual contact includes uh, masturbation on the part of either party, that is the doctor and or the patient, actual sexual intercourse involving genital-to-genital -genital contact, or other instances of either oral or genital or anal contact in any combination, and offering to provide practice-related services such as chiropractic treatment, supplies, or any other chiropractic-related uh, services in exchange for sexual favors. As a final reminder, doctors, all boards and regulatory bodies do not consider uh, patient initiation or patient consent to be a legal defense, although in cases where patients uh, are found to have consented to sexual contact, uh, these may be factors for the board's considerations in terms of assessing appropriate uh, disciplinary penalties. Uh, patient, client, or key party initiation or consent, however, does not excuse or negate the healthcare's responsibility in maintaining the integrity of the doctor patient relationship. So, doctors, I hope this has been a helpful review for you. Uh, our board considers this to be of paramount importance, so much so that they require. Uh, two hours annually of training and re-education in ethics and law. And so sometimes we don't like to talk about these types of topics, uh, but sometimes uh, it's very necessary to remind ourselves uh, of the high esteem and power that we hold uh, in the public and in the doctor-patient relationship. So 
I hope you'll keep these ideas in mind as you continue your chiropractic practice and always maintain the patient's best interest uh, as your highest priority. Uh, for now, uh, I want you to uh, turn in your course examination for me by fax or email. And when we receive your course examination, we'll process your credit for the course immediately. This is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I want to thank you for joining me on today's program. And as always, I'm wishing you best of success in your chiropractic practice. Thank you very much.